In this video, we'll discuss the significant changes that the XRP ledger will soon undergo and the effects they will have on the network as a whole. Guys, we observed earlier today that clawbacks have officially crossed over into the XRP ledger as a feature. We'll discuss clawbacks in this video, along with a fascinating topic regarding the automated market maker. Gentlemen, based on the information I received earlier today, I believe the automated market maker will pass within the next two weeks. Be sure to watch the entire video because I want to show you exactly what is happening with it. Finally, we will discuss the economy and some very significant data that we received late last night at the conclusion of the video. Gentlemen, let me explain why, in spite of the challenging beginning of 2024, I am convinced that this year will witness a significant market upswing. You guys won't want to miss that, so be sure to watch the entire video through to the conclusion. Let's get started with the video and discuss some very exciting things that are currently in the works for the XRP ledger. I've been saying this for a while, but it's finally starting to sink in that these things are actually happening and we'll soon be here. It's also great that the XRP ledger can be upgraded and strengthened over time, as the XRP that we purchased two years ago, yes, a year ago, will not be the same XRP that we will be looking at in the next three to four years because the XRP ledger is continuously growing stronger and more potent. Investing in XRP not only makes it a scarce asset and increases its value in the future financial system, but it also contributes to the network's strength and importance as new features are added. Gentlemen, I'm really thrilled about the two innovations we're going to discuss in this video. But first, I want to talk about the feature that was just approved today, clawbacks. Let me clarify right away that this functionality won't genuinely launch until February 8th, provided that the network's voting consensus remains above 80 for those two weeks. Since we recently broke the threshold early today, there will be clawbacks on the XRP ledger if we maintain our 80 level by the conclusion of the two-week term on February 8th. The fact that clawbacks will enable enterprises to issue assets on the XRP ledger and retrieve them at the request of regulators explains why they will be so crucial to the platform. It is known the banks are subject to extremely stringent restrictions, which has hindered their ability to effectively engage with blockchain technology. A bank will face severe consequences if it produces a token on a blockchain and that token is used to finance illegal activity. The bank will be unable to apologize to the regulator or explain that transactions cannot be reversed on the blockchain and that the situation is too severe for it to handle. The regulators would completely destroy that bank. Thus, blockchain technology must devise a means of enabling these financial institutions to conduct business in a manner that satisfies regulatory bodies. That's why the XRP led your IB GLAD clawbacks to allow banks, organizations, or governments to issue tokens on the ledger and then retrieve them upon request. Guys, keep in mind that this feature will only be available for certain issued assets. It will never work with XRP or tokens that haven't enabled the clawback feature. However, it will give institutions the choice to activate this feature if they so choose. I find this to be very interesting, and I sincerely hope that it will result in the development of USDC, the Circle Stablecoin, on the XRP ledger. This functionality, in my opinion, will be crucial in convincing major institutions to develop on the XRP ledger. This was only implemented today. It will take two weeks for this AT consensus to hold. But this is really, really exciting stuff. In the end, the XRP ledger is growing more potent every day. Moving on though, let me briefly discuss another feature that the XRP community is quite enthusiastic about coming to the XRP ledger. An automated market maker. On the XRP ledger, the automated market maker will build vast pools of liquidity that will enable us XRP holders to use our XRP there and earn a dividend. The thing I wanted to draw your attention to in this video is that we were already at a 62 consensus on the automated market maker. Now, there will be dangers associated with doing this. That's something we'll discuss in another video, not this one. Recall that in order for the clawback option to pass, we just need to receive 80 of the vote, which translates to six additional yes votes. The really exciting news about this is that four validators who have been consistently voting know have now informed us that they plan to change their vote to yes within the next four days. This indicates that we will probably reach an 80 consensus on the automated market maker within the next week or two, which means that both the automated market maker and clawbacks will likely be operational in February. Very, very, very exciting content. I am eager for everything to come to pass. I believe that we are currently witnessing unprecedented progress on the XRP ledger, and this will only increase the strength of the XRP that you and I own. 
But before I do that, allow me to quickly present you with this amazing footage by Metaloman. Although this video is a little lengthy, guys stay for the whole thing. I will not even attempt to describe to you the subject matter they are discussing here. I believe that this is something that we should all be extremely aware of, and I think that Matalaman deserves a great deal of praise for taking the time to do this. Pay attention to this. What's happening here is truly ridiculous. What transpired in New York with the NIDFS following Judge Torres' decision that XRP is not a security in and of itself, J, the New York Department of Financial Services, released an update to its green list less than two months later. Currently, I have praised the New York Department of Financial Services for possessing a green list, something the SEC does not. This green list indicates that you're good to go if you're an exchange and can provide these tokens to people living in New York. Again, it makes sense, but if you want to list a new one, you have to go through a process with us. I found the approach to be commendable. The green list includes XRP. Less than two months after Judge Torres decided that XRP sold on the secondary market is not a security. The New York Department of Financial Services revised their green list and removed XRP. New Yorkers can no longer trade XRP on any platform that has a bit license that allows it to operate in the state of New York. Thus, this seemed a little strange to me because Gary Gensler accepted the defeat and the letter and you and I went over everything line by line. It was a significant and humiliating setback. The other state regulator appears out of nowhere and says, no, 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 no. We are going to delist XRPU. Now that it is clear that it is not a security, we refer to this as a non sequitur. It is not at all logical. In actuality, Judge Torres's ruling would have been grounds for adding it to the green list rather than removing it had it not already been on it. Thus, as a semi-retired lawyer with some spare time, I decided, what the heck, I'd want to know what has transpired in this situation. This is a government employee and an agency, and as such, we should have sunshine rules that enable the people to know why their government acts in certain ways. I promptly followed up on that news release by sending a Freedom of Information Act request to the New York Department of Financial Services. FOIL, which stands for Freedom of Information Law, is the abbreviation for FOIA in New York. They have a deadline to reply and it's extremely similar to FOIA. All I said was that I wanted access to all the papers, emails, texts, voicemails, video chats and other materials related to the decision to remove XRP from the green list. All of it is what I want. Oh, and the second item I would like access to is any correspondence you have had regarding your decision to delist XRP from any level of government, be it the federal government, a state government, or any other agency worldwide. It makes no sense to delist when it's obvious that it's not a security, and a federal judge in the Manhattan town where you work said as much. So naturally, I was looking for evidence of any influence from the SAC on this judgment. In any case, I sent this FOI request, and as of right now, I have not received any papers. They had already missed two deadlines, so they were able to extend their own deadline. The 31st of January, which is the conclusion of the current month, is the next deadline. Therefore, even though I am a licensed attorney in New York, I have hired a lawyer with experience in Freedom of Information Act issues, and I won't let this go because of the strange things that were done in this case. Maybe there's a logical answer for this, Brad. I am at a loss as to what it could be, but I would like to see the documents to see if, in fact, Someone put their thumb on the scale and said, Look, I know this is embarrassing to take it off the list when it's clearly no longer considered a security, but we got to do it because somebody over here is applying pressure. I'm not sure, I'm not sure whether politics played a role, but I plan to find out. And if that means bringing legal action in New York, that's what I will do. To wrap up this video, I'd like to briefly discuss why I believe 2024 will still be a very bullish year. It all starts with something I witnessed late yesterday night. In fact, this quarter's GDP forecasts came in at 3.3. Currently, there have been discussions about the GDP declining this quarter. This quarter, there was speculation of one GDP growth, but the US economy is proving to be incredibly resilient once again. The idea behind high interest rates was to plunge the world into a depression or a session and drive the stock and cryptocurrency markets into complete collapse. What is happening, though, is that those who are predicting a severe economic downturn and calling for doomsday are entirely mistaken. The US economy is incredibly resilient, as we can see. GDP data is heating up once more, which is extremely positive for cryptocurrency assets in the upcoming year. It is still necessary for interest rates to decrease in the US in order to fully establish the bull market impact, but it appears that this will most likely occur later this year. 
The prospect of a depression is incredibly optimistic, given that we are even escaping a severe recession. It's something that nobody anticipated, but the evidence keeps showing that the bulls were correct. The high interest rates were manageable for the US economy. Because of the high interest rates that prevented inflation, the Federal Reserve is now able to lower rates, encouraging investment in riskier assets like cryptocurrency without creating a situation in which everyone loses everything because we are experiencing a great recession or depression. Please keep in mind that we were informed we had an impossible needle to thread at this point, so don't worry if any of that seems too hard to you. In the process, we were basically going to wipe out every market, but we are somehow threading that needle. It's not quite finished, is it? Even if there is still a long way to go, the fact that we have come this far is really surprising, and I believe that demonstrates why it can be so crucial to be a contrarian investor at times. We were bullish, everyone else was pessimistic, and guess what? It's us who get to gain. I can't wait for the second half of the year. I believe that our predictions will come true. In any case, I want to thank all of you for coming. I hoped this update was enjoyable. Please remember to like and subscribe if you did. It is truly very meaningful.